Good morning. I'm here with Phil Bressler, candidate for Overland Park City Council, Ward 5. On behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, thank you, Phil, for being here today. Of course, thank you. Thanks for having us. The Johnson County Public Policy Council is made up of 10 chambers of commerce in Johnson County. Our goal is to provide information about public policy issues impacting area businesses. You ready to get started? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Thank you. In regard to economic development, it has been argued that incentives aren't necessary because development will occur naturally without them being offered. What is your opinion? I, in a free market economy, I believe develop, some form of development would occur. I'm just not sure it's what we would like or want here in Overland Park. We have a long track record here in the city of public-private partnerships that have, I think if you look at all of them, have made a lot of sense. And maybe the key word in there is, is partnership. And I don't know that people totally understand what that means, but with the city having some skin in the game in terms of incentives, that allows us to make good, smart decisions for the good of the city. Without it, development would occur, but or it may not, and, and we don't have that input into what that would be. So a great example would be 95th and Antioch. Maybe you're familiar with that. It was a deteriorating uh, strip mall shopping area that without incentives, maybe nothing would have happened or something might have happened that would not have been all that beneficial. So there was a public-private partnership, and that's just one example where that area, that shopping center, that strip mall was redone. There's now a beautiful high V there. And not only that, I've spoken with a couple people who actually live in that neighborhood, and they have pride now in where they live just because of what's happening in that resurgence in that, in that neighborhood. So. Would that development have happened naturally? I don't know. And some other cases like that, uh, as a city council representative, I'm just not willing to take that risk with our city. What is your opinion on what is commonly referred to as the dark store theory? And what do you think Overland Park should be doing today, if anything, to prepare for rulings that favor the plaintiffs? Yeah, great question. The dark store theory, to my understanding, is still being challenged in the courts. I imagine as that, that does, that takes time. So we have time. We have time. We don't need to panic in terms of the dark store theory. We can, we can think about the future. We can plan for the future. I've run a business before. This is not unusual. You're projecting into the future. There are circumstances and things that happen. You're smart about it. You plan for it, and you adjust as needed. So in terms of dark store theory, if it happens, yes, it'd be a big impact to our city. Um, but again, we can plan for it. And one way to do that is to maintain our, our support of the business community. I think that's very important. The business community supports a lot of what we do here, drives a lot of our revenue. So if we're at risk of losing revenue in one place, how do we make up for it in another? And the business community is, is how we can do that. Housing affordability is addressed in Forward OP, and it's a topic of considerable discussion among employers. What do you think the city of Overland Park should be doing to address this problem? Yeah, I'm very excited about this topic, and I know it's being addressed throughout our city. We do have, I believe we have a variety of housing options uh, in Overland Park, but the last I saw, the average home price in Overland Park was around $352,000. So certainly not everybody can, can afford that by any means. So you've got houses on one end, the average Overland Park house, You've also got apartments, and a lot of those are luxury apartments that monthly rents there aren't cheap either. So um, what there is, and we're not the only city where this is the case, there's a middle gap between your single family residence and apartment living. So there's some really, really interesting concepts that are being um, done in other parts of the country that I think we need to be open to and pursue. So a couple examples are what they're called pocket neighborhoods, cottage courts. So you might have a piece of land with four, five, six, seven, eight smaller, more affordable, beautiful, probably new homes surrounded by green space, which is an important part of what we're looking for here in Overland Park. So a really unique, kind of cool place to live, not only for first time home buyers, but even empty nesters, folks like me who are looking to downsize. And here in Overland Park, it's not always easy to downsize. You're, you're actually kind of upsizing them in cost. So these kind of concepts, I think, are something we really need to look at and be open to, both from a city point of view and as residents. If we're going to talk about housing affordability as residents, we have to want it too. So um, lots of exciting concepts that, that we can pursue. 
In the short term, it appears we can keep our mill levy unchanged to meet current budget obligations. However, sluggish sales tax collections and increased demands on infrastructure from growth could necessitate a change. What are your thoughts on our current budget and the outlook for the future? Yeah, I'm pretty positive about the future, and I'm very confident in, in our city and our city staff. I know they, they do a great job with our budget and looking ahead, and it's not all just about today. It's, it's, it's projecting into the future. So, again, I just mentioned that as a business person. That's what I've done, and you, it's, it's just reality. You manage the ups and downs. So, um, one, again, another way, though, to, to address and keep the mill levy low, and I probably sound like a broken record, is... Um, if we want to keep our property taxes low as individuals, uh, we need to support the business community. I don't know if everybody knows this, and uh, I've learned a lot as I've been running for office here, but corporations pay uh, a 25% tax rate on their assessed value. Individuals, residences, we pay 11 and a half. So that's a pretty good deal. So the more we can support the business community to, to help us with our budget, uh, I think that's a good thing. The governors of Kansas and Missouri have recently forged a truce in the so-called economic border war. Do you support their actions, and what impact do you believe their agreement will have on Overland Park? Yes, I, uh, I support the truce. I, I think it's a good thing. It's been in the news for years and years and years, and people bouncing back and forth. So uh, for Overland Park, I think we just need to continue to be a good choice. People come here because they love the quality of life, they love the great schools, that's why companies want to relocate here, but we need to continue to make it an attractive uh, option for them. There's competition. There are other cities outside of Overland Park that these people can relocate to, or these companies can relocate to, so I think as long as we continue to be, to be business friendly, then we will attract those companies here. As we wrap up, tell us why you're seeking public office. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race, making you best suited to serve? Yes. I'm very excited and very proud to be running for Overland Park City Council. My desire is to give back to the community. I've been so fortunate to live here and have benefited in so many ways. So the least I can do is give back. I believe I'm a good choice. I'm a positive, forward-thinking person that can bring my skills to, to making Overland Park a, a better city moving forward. We have a lot to be uh, Grateful for a very successful city, but our work is not done, and uh, I believe I'm the leadership to make that happen moving forward. So in terms of what makes me different from my opponent, I'd like to point out a couple things. Uh, maybe clear the air here a little bit. One is I've been called a lobbyist, and that is just untrue. I have spent my entire career in marketing and advertising. I have never been a lobbyist. I don't know where that's coming from, so I just wanted to clear the record on that. Number two, um, I've been basically accused of being supported by the business community. And to that, I say yes and thank you. I think that's a great thing. I have uh, just spent a lot of time, I spent my entire career networking, connecting with transparency, integrity, getting to know people, learning from them. And uh, the business community, as I've stated before, is very important to Overland Park. I don't think we'd be where we are today without that business community. So I'm really proud to be, be a part of that. And if they're choosing to support me in this campaign, then I say thank you, and I think that's a great thing for our community. A couple other areas where we are different. One is I've actually been very active in the community for a long, long time in terms of community organizations, nonprofits. I think you can go to my website, bressler4op.com, check out my resume and list of activities I've been involved in. I think that's important to understanding who we are as a community. Another point of difference is uh, I believe very strongly in the Blue Valley Public School District. My wife and I chose to send our two boys to public schools. It's a big reason we moved here. It's a big reason a lot of people move here. And uh, that, that's a big reason we came here. Um, my wife also taught special needs for 10 years at Overland Trail Elementary. So we are very invested in the public schools. And finally, I think this is important. I'm the only candidate, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, and that's OK. I'm the only candidate to have signed the Statement of Fair Campaign Practices uh, document. That's from the State of Kansas Government Ethics Commission. I think integrity and transparency matters. And I'm proud to have signed that document. So again, thank you for this time. Uh, I, if you're looking for a positive candidate who can lead the city into the future, who just believes in integrity and transparency, I'm your candidate.
So thank you again for allowing this, uh, this time, and uh, I'd appreciate your vote on November 5th. Well, thank you for spending some time with us this morning, and we wish you the best of luck yeah. with the election. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.